Welcome to another video. Let's find the domain of this complicated fraction, or we'll call it a complex fraction. And there are two ways you can go about this. You can just look at what you see and compute what the domain is, or you can simplify and, com and get what the domain is. I'm going to show you both ways, even though they look almost the same. Let's get into it. So this is what you do whenever you see a function and you're asked to find the domain, especially a rational function, that's usually the one that causes trouble. Just look at the fraction and look at the bottommost part. This is the bottommost part of this uh, function. Look, you have x plus 1 being the denominator of a fraction within a fraction. You want to make sure that this is not 0. So the first move you make is you say that x plus 1 cannot be 0. So the first way you approach it is to say x plus 1 x plus 1 is not equal to 0. And if x plus 1 is not 0, that implies x is not equal to negative 1. So you've gotten one number you must exclude from the domain of this function. What else do you know? Well, you've looked at the bottommost part, and it is x plus 1. Look at the bigger picture. You also see that this bottom cannot be zero. That's the second approach to this. So you can say that 1 plus 1 over x plus 1 cannot be equal to zero. So you cannot have zero here in the denominator. Also, all of this cannot be equal to zero. That's the next move you're going to make. So you just solve this. Well, what do we do? We can move this one over to this side and say that 1 over x plus 1 is not equal to when this one moves over, it becomes minus 1. Okay, now this is a trick I always use to solve rational equations. I just move this one on top of this, and that frees this guy to become x plus 1. So I have x plus 1 is equal to, when you move this one over here, it's, it's 1 over minus 1. 1 over minus 1 is just minus 1. Move this over, you have x, oh, not equal to. x is not equal to minus 2. So, now we know that for this function to exist, x cannot be minus 1. Where is it? And x cannot be minus 2. And that's it. So we can conclude that the domain domain of f of x is all values of x from negative 1 till you get to negative 2 union all values from negative 2 all the way to negative 1 union all values from negative 1 to infinity. This is the domain of the function that we have. So this is one approach you could take. The second approach you could take is, after you've noticed the first part, and you don't know what to do with this, you might as well simplify the expression and see if you can find the domain. Okay, so let's call this part A. Let's call this A and call this B. I'm just gonna show you another way to do part B. So suppose you're done with this part and you don't know what to do. Well, since you know that, this is obvious but you don't know what else you could do, why don't you get rid of the fraction within a fraction? So what I'm going to do is multiply the top and bottom by x plus 1. So watch this. I'm going to say x plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1 over x plus 1. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by this fraction. So I'm going to multiply by x plus 1. I'm going to multiply by x plus 1. So I'm multiplying the top and bottom by the same thing. See what happens. On top here, I'm going to end up with x plus 1 squared. And the bottom, I'm going to have, see I'm multiplying all of this. So this times this is going to give me x plus 1. And this times this is going to give me just 1. So plus 1. So see what I have. I have x plus 1 squared divided by x plus 2. 
Now you can go back and find the number to exclude. Definitely what makes this denominator equal to zero is when x equals negative two, which is the same thing we got when we did not simplify. So this implies x plus two cannot be equal to zero, which implies x is not equal to negative two, which is the same as what we got here. And then you can write out your domain, which is the same thing as we got in the first case. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.